think we're ready. Hold on real quick. Almost ready. There we go. Huh. All right. Let's get started. Cool. We're here. Nice. Hey everyone, welcome to another Webflow Workshop. I am your host, Nelson. Thank you for joining me this week. This is episode 128. Yes, uh, so what are we doing today? We are going to make a full screen uh, nav menu, okay? And so you may have seen some of these, uh, uh, some websites that have like awesome effects when you click on the menu button, but it doesn't do that traditional slide in from the right or uh, slide down or, or something like that. No, it, it takes up the whole screen and then it gives you a completely new experience okay and so that's what we're going to do and it's quite easy if you think about it it's basically a light box or a modal that's all it is so it's it's not that hard so um before we begin thank you to everyone who's in the live chat right now if you're watching a recording thank you for joining me uh thank you for watching this this stream happens every other tuesday around uh 10 a.m pacific time now, um, just to let you know, all right, that we will actually have another stream next week. It's going to be a special sneak pre sneak peek of something really awesome. Okay, I'll let you guys take a guess, but I'll announce it at the end of this stream what we're going to be doing next week. So next Tuesday, put on your calendar, uh, put a reminder, 10 a.m. Tuesday, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time youtube.com slash webflow or just follow us on the uh, twitter twitter.com slash webflow app and we'll announce what we'll be doing all right so here we go uh let's see here S uh starting late what do you mean am i stream right now is the stream working hold on yeah anyone else have problems with crowdcast let me just double check it says Stream starting soon still. It says I'm live. People on YouTube, can you see me? People on Crowdcast, can you see me? Huh. Not sure what's going on. I think I said everything right. Uh, All I see is stream starting soon. Okay, so we're going to switch gears uh yeah weird all right we're gonna switch gears for people in the crowdcast room i'm gonna send you the link to the youtube uh let's see here oh, i hear audio now all right so i'm putting a link to the youtube room go ahead and switch over to there um Let's see here. Everyone else who is in the youtube room you, uh okay jeff says he sees me all right good let's keep going got to keep the show rolling all right so stay tuned for next week all right here we go let's get into the nav nav menu all right simple this i'm gonna make this as simple as possible because i want you to know the basics and then once you know the basics then it's all about you putting your own design your own flair uh your own style into the in, into your nav menu because it's any animations you want any design it, it just build off of this okay so here we go first thing i'm gonna do is let's go ahead and let's put a button okay we're just gonna put a button real quick and we're gonna move this button this button doesn't really mean anything it's the only, it's the trigger that opens them the light um sorry the nav menu okay so we're just gonna call, put a label call it menu all right we're gonna style this however we want let's go five on the border radius so it looks like that okay cool simple and just you know hover effect because we have to because why not let's make it a little bit darker like that so now we have a boom simple hover effect okay that part's done okay now let's go ahead and make the nav menu i'm gonna bring in a div block right here and we're gonna call this nav and we're going to make this full uh, we're gonna make this fixed and set it to full, all right, and uh, yeah, we'll set it to full, and we'll set the Z index to something crazy, like 
um, 9,000, okay? Or 9,001, there we go. And then after we do that, uh, we can, we'll set this to a color, like let's make it brown or tan, like, kind of like that, okay? And uh, after that, we can go ahead and we'll just put, we'll just make this a uh, flex for now in center center. And I'm just going to put some text that says nav menu. Okay. And lastly, I need a close. Okay. So let me put another uh, button and go put this to the top right. I'm going to push this away from here. Say 15 and then push it away from there 15 and this one's gonna say close so it's working just like a modal you, just like how you would make a modal okay actually we should put on the same place on the on the left since we started we open from the left we should close from the left right there good good uh, let's use the same class button button and then we'll call this close uh, right there, right there. Okay, that's good right there. All right. Good, good. All right. So, those are the basics. So, I have an element to trigger the nav menu to open, and now I have a trigger to close it. In this nav menu right here, that's where you would put your nav items, or you mean your nav links, okay? Again, I'm making this as basic as possible and then we're going to start designing with with stuff uh, i have a layout in mind that i drew down a little wireframe and so let's let's handle the interactions now so first i'm going to set this to display none okay and uh yeah so we display none on the nav and now on this button i'm going to go to this uh lightning bolt click on plus mouse click on the first click, start an animation. And now I'm gonna press plus. I'm gonna say open nav. I'm gonna go back to navigator. And since I'm still in animation mode, as you can see down here, that means I can select any element I want. So I am I want to affect a different element based on clicking of this element. Okay, so I click on this nav. Click on, uh, go back to interactions. Now let's press plus and hide show and this one's going to do flex okay and we're done all right so let me just show you what just happened when i click on this nav menu shows up now we need to do the opposite for close menu so let's go here and select this button right here this is our close button set a element trigger mouse click on first click start animation and I'm going to create a new one and called close nav. Press plus. Oh, wait. Nope. I have to select the element. So I'm going to click on nav. And now hide show. I'm going to set that to display none. And that's it. That's full screen nav. All right. <laughs> like it, it's really, really, really not that hard. Okay, open, close, open, close. All right. So like I said, this is when you take the time to design whatever you want, because now it's just all fun. All right. Uh, so let's go here. Let's start designing. Let's have some fun. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to uh, let's turn on the nav again. Okay. And here, so the nav, I have this layout right here. I don't know if you can see it. Will my camera pick it up? No, I can't. All right, let me just do it. Let's delete this. And uh, let me do this and this. I'm going to make a two column. So the first column is going to have a pretty picture. And then the second column will have a grid of four. Okay, a grid of two by two. Okay, so we're going to do all of this with Flexbox. So right here, and we're going to say, call this uh, picture wrapper. 
I'm going to expand. I'm going to put another div. And this one is um, uh, nav wrapper, uh, nav link wrapper, because the nav links are going to be in here. And let's go ahead and make our nav links. And so with this nav link wrapper, I'm going to flex it as well. I'm going to set this to wrap children because each nav link is going to be 50%. So once it gets over 100%, it's going to wrap down to the next row. So we go right here. And actually, let's use a link block. Link block. And we're going to call this, uh, wait, nav link wrapper. I want to make sure that. Oh, it's not stretched. I want to to the top. There we go. So we're going to call this nav link. Make it expand. Actually, no, not expand. It's going to be a basis of 50%. Okay. So copy, paste, paste, paste. There we go. Um, oh, wait. I need to stretch them all, huh? Uh, is it like this? Nope. forgot how I did this. Let me see here. Can I do a height of 50%? Yeah, there we go. There we go. One, two, three, four. Easy. All right. Now, for the nav link, I'm going to set this one to flex as well and uh, set it to center and center right here, vertically and horizontally. So that way I can put a label, a text label. And this one's just going to be like, let's call it home. So copy that, paste it here. This one's going to be about, it's going to be like work. And then this is going to be like contact or not work. Let's put projects. Okay. So again, all I'm doing is building on top of the basics. And at the end of the stream, you'll be able to clone this project for free into your Webflow account. Even if you have a free starter account, you can clone this and start uh, reverse engineering on it, build on top of it, use it for a future project. It's all up to you. All right. So nav link, let's remove the underline. Let's go ahead and make this like three, three, three. And actually, no, let's use, let's use blue. A little bit darker. Let's go like that. Ooh, not a fan of Arial. Let's use open sands. Actually, no, let's use uh, let's use Merriweather. Sure, why not? Cool. Okay, back on it. Nav link. Let's make this bold. Make this all caps. Make it big. Make it big right there. Cool. All right. Now, each one of these will have... Um, let's see here. What was I thinking? Um, let's make each nav link have a different background color. So I know which one I'm hovering over. So let's let's save this color real quick. I'm gonna save this, make it a global style. There we go. And so that way, when I hover over this gay, the text turns white, but the background turns blue. And there we go. And so we have our hover effect. But it needs a timing because it doesn't look smooth. So let's go ahead and make it smooth by using transition, background color. Let's preview what we got. Super simple. Oh, the font color needs to change too. So we need a timing on font color. Pro tip, never scroll all the way down to the bottom and click all properties because then you're adding more strain to your user's computer. Um, take the time to find each property and do that. Okay. That means that the computer is only looking for the background color changing and the color changing, not all properties. Okay. And there we go. Looks super smooth. All right. So let's do what I think I have time for. Oh, it's only 15 minutes in. All right. So maybe I can do this. Let me, let me put some pictures in this picture wrapper. So what I want to do is when I hover over home, the picture here changes. When I hover over about the picture here changes, etc. Okay. So, um, oh, I need a default picture. Uh, let's get a default picture up in here. Let me use a background. 
choose image I've already uploaded for them and let's just use this for now these are all from unsplash so it's all cool stock photography all right so we'll leave that one as home but when I hover over about it'll change so let's get this picture wrapper I've set the position to relative because I'm going to put pictures on top of this picture by using position absolute so let me show you how to do that. I'm going to drag in a div block inside of picture wrapper. Okay. And I'm going to call this about fo uh, photo. Actually, I'm going to call this photo first. So that way I can use the same class for all the other photos. Set this to absolute full. And uh, is this what I want? Yeah, yeah. This is what I want. All right, so we're done with that. And now photo one, I'm gonna give a combo class of one. Actually, let's give it a combo class of about. Makes more sense. Give it a background of this. Center it, there we go. And I can just copy this and paste it two more times. And so for this one, let's go ahead and set that one to, for the first one about. We're gonna set the opacity to zero. And now we have the second one right here. I'm going to remove about. And we're going to set this to projects. Change the background. There we go. You know I was going to do space. If you know me, you knew I was going to do this. <laughs> All right. So we have that. And now we're done with this. Let's set the opacity down to zero and go down to the last photo, remove about, and this one's gonna be contact. And again, if you know me, you know why I chose this photo. All right, so we're done and we can set this to opacity zero as well. All right, so we have our four photos, our default one that's in the picture wrapper and then we have three other ones, okay? Now we can go ahead and, oh, this button needs to be on top, though. I need to be able to see it. So let's make sure that the Z index, there you go, is as, at least one. So it goes on top. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and set the nav link. So this first one right here, what I can do is, um, actually, no. We're going to leave the first one because that's default. Leave it as is. This one, though, we'll do mouse hover. On hover, start animation. And we call this about. Go to go back here. And my about is this one, this first photo. Go back here. And we'll just set the opacity to 100. And that's it. And we'll set this to ease out. And it'll look like this. Sort of. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Okay. Did you see that? It was really quick. Let me make it slower. Let's set the duration to a full second. That's not a second. Let's see here. Let me set the initial state then. Set the initial state of that to zero and set the opacity a full second. Ease out. There we go. Starts from zero and goes to 100. It should do that. There we go. Nice and smooth. And now we just need to do the ease out. I mean the hover out. So we just start animation. And we'll go about out. Click that photo. And so we just rinse and repeat for the other two. Okay. Well, let me turn off the volume of my phone. Sorry. There we go. All right, so about out, opacity, we'll set that to zero and set the duration to one with the ease of ease out. And let's try it. Not that hard. And again, you can do whatever you want. I mean, this is just very basic stuff. And since our basic opening of the nav menu is done, it still works just right here. It's all up to you what you want to do. All right, let's do the same thing with projects and contact. 
and we'll call it a day. Well, I mean, uh, for the tutorial, we'll call it a day. Okay, so let's go to nav link, mouse hover, start animation, plus set this, uh, name this project. Uh, let's go to our second photo right here. Press plus, opacity, set the initial state to zero, plus opacity 100, ease out, duration one second. Go back for the hover out, I'm gonna call this projects out. Go to my second photo, opacity zero, easing in, ease out. Duration one, preview it, there we go, there we go. Not too bad, all right, let's do one more. And then I'll take your questions and see what you guys are doing with Webflow. All right, I see a lot of questions inside of YouTube, I'll get to those after this last one, okay? Let's, let's go, let's go. Mouse hover. Start animation, contact, last photo. Um, plus, right here, opacity, there we go. Set the initial state to zero, plus opacity, set it to 100%, ease out on the easing, one second, and now we just do the same exact thing we were doing for the easing or for the hover out press plus contact out find the last photo opacity zero ease out duration one cool let's go not that hard Let's do one more thing. Uh, it looks like I have a couple minutes left. So let's do one more thing. Let's let's make the opening of the nav more awesome. So I'm going to set this to none. Set the, the whole nav to none. And let's go ahead and do this. Go, let's go back to the button. And I'm going to go to my open nav animation. Okay, instead of doing a hide show, right, I'm going to set the initial state to none. I'm also going to set an initial state of 0%. Okay, now when I click on this, I want the hide show to be flex, but I still don't see it yet because my opacity is set to 0. So I'm going to set the opacity to 100 with a duration of, yeah, let's leave it 0.5, and we'll go ease out cubic. And if you're wondering about what easings to use, easings.net, okay? You can just always refer to this and you can see the timing. So I used ease out cubic and it looks like that. Okay, and um, let's do one more thing. Uh, let's have it like kind of zoom out-ish, all right? So let me go back to the initial state and set the scale to 1.2 and then I'm going to scale this to 1 okay so it's going to start big and then fit inside the screen so let's do this okay yeah it's kind of cheesy because it takes so long so let's f make that slower oh it's on linear that's why uh what's here linear out cubic so let's copy that out cubic no not quad out cubic there we go there we go. Close it out. Do it. Oh. Okay. So the reason why it's not doing it again on the close is because I need to reset the the, the styles on close. So let's open up my nav. This is my close button. Close nav. So right now, see, I still have it as a hide and show. So let's reset everything by not doing hide and, uh, hide and show, but doing a zooming in so let's get the the whole nav and let's scale this to 1.2 
and the opacity will be set to zero. And then after that happens, I'm going to set the hide and show to display none. Um, after that, let's see here. So after that, I want to make sure that the easing is the same thing out cubic. And I think we're done because I reset the, the styles. Let's see. Not too hard. And so you may have seen more complicated nav um, full screen menus happen. But this is the very basic of it, all right? Now, last thing I want to show you in three minutes, if I can, is let's, let me just hide all of these things real quick because I want to give you a different idea to use. Okay, so I'm hiding all those. All right, uh, let's turn on nav real quick. And we'll set this to center. I want you guys to try this. Drag in a search. Oh, where'd my search go? Where are you at? Nav, come back. There we go. And my search. There you go. So style this search. It would be really cool if you had a full screen, uh, full screen search menu or search function. Because if you do something like this, watch. If I click on search on like TechCrunch, it's the whole thing. It's the whole page. So it's a, because if you have a blog or something, this would be really nice because people can focus on the search field rather than uh, all the other elements. Because once you click search, you, you're hyper-focused on what you want to search for. So you can easily remove the background. Oh, wow. Why did you come back? What happened? Yeah, well, you can remove the background Hey guys, what is this? I said leave. There we go. <laughs> this nav, what happened? Oh, maybe something I did. I don't know. But yeah, so you can is style this however you want and do something like this. And I think it would be totally cool. All right. Um, okay, that's it for the tutorial. Let, uh, I'll res reset all the styles. So it'll work again before I let you guys clone it. But yeah, I think this has been fun. Let's let's go into some questions. Um, let's see here. This, I got something from... Sorry, hold on. Streaming in 1080p, recommend turning on this switch so the video lo loads more smoothly. Did I forget to do something for Crowdcast? Ooh, I didn't see that switch. Okay, thanks, Sai. All right, um, but we got to keep moving on. Let me go back to YouTube. Uh, let's see here. Let me scroll up. So if you have any questions, yeah, so if you have any questions about Webflow, you have any questions about web design, uh, let me know now in any of the chat rooms, the Crowdcast or the YouTube chat room, I will answer it right now. If you have anything that you're building right now inside of Webflow, Go ahead and put your webflow.io link. Uh, if you can't put the link, just replace one of the dots in your URL with like a parentheses and the word dot, and then I'll just copy paste that, okay? So I wanna see what you are building. I wanna know what questions you have on your mind. And I wanna tell you next week, the stream, you're gonna have fun. Um, the grid, yes, the grid is coming, oh man. So the team has been working really hard on CSS Grid inside of Webflow. I don't know if you saw, uh, if you're pay paying close attention to the UI uh, on the screen, but it is it is coming. It is coming, and next week, one of our product managers, the one who's been working so hard with the team on CSS Grid inside of Webflow, will be on the stream giving us a live demo and it is so awesome because it makes making layouts so much easier you can make some really creative layouts and you don't have to worry um you don't have to worry too much about um the exact 
place of where your things are going to... Uh, I'll let her explain next week, but next Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific, be here. Be here. Follow us on Twitter and, and everything so you'll get the notification. Um, Yeah. Linda. Thank you so much, Linda, for doing this. Um, Let's see here. Let's get to some questions. Uh, Brash Art. I'm new to Webflow and don't know what to do. Uh, university.webflow.com. Check it out. A lot of great free resources for you to start learning Webflow. And you can use Webflow for free. Uh, you can make two unhosted websites with two static page pages each. And you can also use our CMS. Test out Webflow. See if it works into your workflow. Uh, and yeah, just have fun. Uh, let's see here. Mr. Lawnmower TV. How would you keep a drop down open on page load? Uh, would it be the drop down component that Webflow has? If that one, you may need to you may need to add some custom code. Probably in my head, I'm thinking have a jQuery custom code that clicks the drop down menu for you on load, and then it shows up. Okay, um, but yeah, Chuck Phillips, next week's or in two weeks, next Tuesday, not two Tuesdays from now, next Tuesday, what's the date? Oh, here, more specific, September 18th, 10 a.m. Tuesday Pacific time. Be here, I'll be here, Linda will be here. We're going to learn the grid. We're going to do it together. It's so, oh, so awesome. All right. Uh, let's scroll up. Anyone having issues with media upload? Not sure what you mean by that. Are you talking about the assets manager, Alexander? Uh, hi again, Peter and Carlos. Matt is asking, can you also run down how we can make the animation of the menu a bit more dynamic? Uh, I think I did that. I mean, again, this is the very basics. You can add as much animations as you want. For example, if you click on the open nav button, you click on that trigger, you can make all five boxes, the photo wrapper and then the, uh, the grid of two by two all show up in a staggered uh, load. Okay, like one, two, three, four, five. You can totally do that. Um, and university.webflow.com, there is a, a video on staggered load that McGuire created. So check that one out. Use those lessons and apply them to these lessons. Nathan says, Bear Grylls website, can you make it for the next tutorial? Actually, Waldo has already made, um, I don't know. I'll ask Waldo if he made a tutorial about that. I know he recreated it when IX2 first came out, and I was like, what? So if he hasn't made a tutorial, I will make a tutorial. I'll do it on uh, a future stream. Um, Harry says, Nelson, I dare you to click something on the left toolbar. All right, done. Let's see here. Next. Okay, I think I hit all the questions. Uh, thanks, Peter. I created a 404 page with the 404 SVG. Okay, I think his question is answered. Oh, okay, a lot of questions. In which... Uh, okay, wow. Sam, I've been trying to create a menu like these that would function like a set of drawers in which interacting with one drawer triggers would trigger would target other open drawers to animate close before animating the selected drawer open. All right. So uh, what you would need to do in your animation is uh, do an animation for that one drawer. And then if you have three other drawers, set an animation for those other three and uh on that one trigger okay and then when you do a hover on the second drawer make sure to set one to open that and to close the other three so you have to make four separate animations four separate triggers and four different animations to make that happen okay um let's see here hopefully that answers your question uh, let's see here. Thank you, Alex, for the custom code uh, answer. 
Uh, Kevin, I noticed you have a button to the left of the flex button to the right of display none. I don't have that button. What is it? It is CSS Grid. And you will learn about it next week. It's going to be so awesome. Uh, yep, you already answered it. Thanks for sharing your efforts in Webflow. No problem, Robert. Uh, yeah, maybe the display grid option. Stay tuned. Yep, yep. There it is. There it is. Cool. Is anyone... Could be a short stream right now. Is anyone working on anything in Webflow that you want me to review or you want me to feature on this stream? Please let me know. Again, you can't put links in the YouTube chat, so what you're going to have to do is replace one of the dots in your URL with a parentheses and the word dot. But if there's no other questions, no other websites, we can end this early. But I want to make sure I take the time to speak to you, the community, to make sure that you are getting your questions answered. Uh, let's see here. I'm not sure how to say your name. KB. I'm just going to call you KB. Does anybody use Flexbox with no worry of browser capability? Some of our past developers frowned upon it because of IE. I'm like, ain't nobody got time for IE. <laughs> nice. So, uh, yes. Let us let me open up Can I Use. So, here's what I and the rest of the support team usually uh, answer for those. Uh, for that question, okay? So we go to caniuse.com and we search for Flex, okay? And as you can see here, all modern browsers are green. That means all modern browsers can use it except for IE11, okay? And the reason why is because it only has partial support. So if you have a client that insists on making Flexbox work for IE11, you have two choices, okay? One is you tell them Flexbox doesn't work with IE 11. It only works with modern browsers. IE 11 is a very old browser. So we can nix the whole Flexbox uh, idea and just do the old school floats and whatnot. It's going to take a lot more work. And more work means more time. More time means it costs more money to get the project done. And plus, if you really want to fix your site for IE, the users who are using IE have uh, very old, unsecure browsers, okay? So that could be a security risk for the web users or even your client who, does, who doesn't want to use any other browser, okay? Um, and the second option is just, just, sorry, that was the second option. Tell them it'd be best if you upgraded your browser because of security issues. Make sure that your computer is safe, right? And all the other browsers are using it, uh, using Flexbox. So it's a win-win for option two. Okay. All right. Okay, we got some Webflow projects. Yay. Here we go. Uh, Brandon. Uh, let's check this out real quick. Oops. Uh, Okay, uh, you're, did you spell bridge wrong? Bridge, there we go, I got it. Um, I think this is yours, let's see. Let me throw it over. All right, Brandon, is this your site? All right. Brandon Moscow, what's up, what's up? All right. So, first thing. It's very, very loud, okay? Um, when I say that, I'm not sure where my eye is supposed to go at first. There's too much happening on the screen, okay? So let's break this down um, as simple as possible. So first thing, right here, you have a logo. Uh, and this logo looks like those uh, tag clouds that bloggers used to use. Uh, and if your client was the one who made this, I would really suggest redesigning it or making it simple or even just leave West Main Bridge or something like that. Uh, because all these other text is, is way too much. It's, cl it's cluttering up this logo space. Okay. So it's really hard to read this within a split second. Okay. Again, you, it takes three to six seconds to keep a person on the site, okay? And when they're there, they want to know where are they at, 
what does um what is it for and how do i get more information okay so where am i at i'm already confused okay uh, all right so got to clean this up speaking of cleaning up uh there's i type hierarchy that's what i'm looking for let me go to techcrunch real quick so techcrunch has a, has a lot of articles okay but it's very, very clean because they're using type hierarchy. And how they're using it is um, they're focusing on the words and less on the UI. Okay. So what I mean by that is they don't have much going on on this page. Whereas this one, you have a lot going on. Okay. So you have some type hierarchy here where you have a color and then this the, uh, the category is pushed back a little. So that's good. But this this image right here, I'm not sure what it's supposed to represent. Okay. Um, so you might want to push that back. Is this really needed? All right. Um, and this blue area right here, again, look at their uh, take TechCrunch, for example. They didn't add a nav a background color for their nav they just kept it nice and white all right because it's like supposed to read like a uh, a very uh open space paper speaking of open space push out your um paddings uh for each of these divs uh push it give it more breathing room for the eyes okay like look how much space is like down here that's really good okay but then up here it's really close to the the bottom border of galleries. Okay. Uh, watch out for your nav, or I mean your hovers. You might want to do overlay hidden for the parent because I'm not sure if you want the nav, uh, the scroll bar to get all weird because you can see my browser is like, okay, my, uh, okay, it's not my browser. So this bouncing effect, I'm not sure if this is intended. Okay, so give it more white space. Give make it make it more uh, open space. So take some uh, notes from TechCrunch, and you should be good to go. Okay. Um, and also your color. Not sure why you have purple. Is purple part of their brand? Okay. And this is cut off right here. View image gallery. All right. So keep working on it. Let's move on to the next one. Mr. Lawnmower. Let's check this out. Mr. Lawn Mower. Webflow.io. All right, we're here. Cool. Mr. Lawn Mower. All right. I immediately know where I'm at, Mr. Lawn Mower. I know what it's about landscaping i know where to go for more information commercial or residential awesome okay um let's see here i'm happy that you didn't do oh why put a slider component with one slide i can't move left or right and the only reason why i knew this is a slider because i'm like what is this dot for Okay, uh, did you intend for this? If not, replace this slider with just a regular div with a background, and you should be good to go. Um, you know, it'd be cute if you did a scrolling animation where as you scroll, the truck is moving from right to left like it's driving. <laughs> I don't know, maybe too much. I don't know, it's up to you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, more space at the top. In my opinion, you know, you want to space it out. Um, okay, so this is a lot of copy. In, in my opinion, you want to have as little as copy as possible that fully explains what's going on. Okay, so using Webflow as an example because the marketing team did so well. So here we go. The copy, one sentence, okay? Let's go here. One sentence for each thing. One sentence. One sentence. If you can crunch this down to two sentences, even better. Okay? Because, again, people want... 
people want to find information really fast and understand who you are really fast. Okay. Um, let me just read it. We offer a comprehensive suite of, unless you're doing SEO, which I don't understand that game completely. So maybe I, I don't fully understand. Can you trust? So something with the trust would be good to call out here. Because you want to trust the person who's taking care of your landscape. Okay, good good hovers. Okay, the padding here is smaller than this one at the top. Watch out for that. More space uh, here. So yeah, top and bottom spaces could use more. All right. Um, so when lo using logos, it's best that you turn them grayscale. But on hover, you set uh, you turn off that grayscale. For example, um, let's go here. See, so these don't turn on to their color, but uh, we set them to what they call knockout or just using white. That way, the colors of each of these brands of each of these logos don't clash with our own uh, color. Okay, so these are all different colors and they're clashing with your green. So change these, uh, find their black, uh, just regular black color or make them grayscale. Okay. Cool. You see, you did it here. So this is good. And yeah, you need to push everything out more. Um, because now it's just getting very crunched and it's becoming very, very loud. All right. Okay, so hopefully this helps. I have a couple more. Um, let's see here. Steven Musada. Keep in mind, links don't work properly. It's cool. Thank you for joining me today, Steven. All right, let's throw that over. Ooh, I think this is going to be a good one. I think this is going to be a good one. Let's close this one and close this one. All right, let's re redo that one. Mm-hmm. That was cool. Um, is it meant to stop here for artistic purposes? If so, that's cool. Uh, I think your nav can get smaller, a little more smaller. Um, actually... What if you removed your name off of your logo up here? You know, it's already super small. What if you just removed it and left your initials like that? And that's your, that's your logo. Because people will get it uh, later on. They'll see the S and they'll see the M. And they see the, uh, the name Steven here. So I, I think you can remove it. Okay? That way, when you scroll down, you can make this even smaller. Because look how much space is being taken uh, away from your page when you scroll down. Okay, so maybe you can make it smaller. Okay. All right, just a little bit, not too small. Okay. Um, nice headshot. Good job. You have your story. I love it when portfolios have stories. All right, watch out for your uh, white space. So you have um, nice white space right here right here, but then it gets crunched right here. Uh, you wanna make sure that you expand it more. Love this, love this right here. This is nice, mm, nice hover. Okay, your hover isn't set on this one, so I'm guessing it's still a, yeah, work in progress. Oh, speaking of this grid, yeah, you can do this grid inside of CSS grid. And you, you don't have to do the flex box thing. Oh, God, it's awesome. <laughs> it's going to be fun. All right. Great job. Let me look at uh, one more. Let's look at a case study. Let's look at your first one. Nope. Okay, I'm guessing this is Lorem Ipsum. Yep. Cool. Nice. Watch out for your space at the top unless you want that. Uh, watch out the gutters right here. It's really close. What, what, what? 
It's okay. <laughs> it's probably for uh, a client who um, couldn't use Webflow. That's totally fine. I mean, again, Webflow isn't the end-all be-all, but we want to make it as best as we can. Uh, okay. Um, that one's done. That one's that was done. Oh wow, lots of questions. Okay, I think we're done with the reviews. Let's go back here. Got nine more minutes. Um, let's see here. Website's not done yet. Totally understand. From Crowdcast, Harry, Disruptive Social. Love to know your thoughts on this site, Harry. Uh, is this one on Webflow? Did, Harry, wait, who made this? Is it you, Harry? Hold on, hold on. Because this was in our showcase. Let me let me throw it on here real quick. And then let me... Hold on. So when I saw this, I was like, this wasn't, this wasn't built in Webflow. Come on. And then I saw it was. I'm like, this, this is nutty. This is, <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> Refresh, do it again. Oh man, to think of things like this. How do you do the things? <sighs> Harry, did you do, were you part of the team that did this? Uh, oh, his, he, his name on Crowdcast is Disruptive Social. You did do this. You, d you are an awesome person. Right now, you're an awesome person. Harry. Oh, okay. All right. Let's 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 take an adventure. I haven't actually ventured into this site. Um, actually, one thing. There's a hover effect. Yeah, just one little thing. Um, why can't I click and then I go to the services or something? I have to go all the way down here and then click. On, oh, you're doing things. Custom code. You're so disruptive. <laughs> All right, let's go to service. Oh, okay, you have page transitions. Yes. What do you do? Oh, and you have glitches. What are you doing to me? Harry. You and your team. Is it just you or you have a team? This is. <laughs> okay, let's full screen menu, please, please. Okay, I'm back. Why, why you do this? Why you make me happy? Oh, God. <laughs> the awesome concept. Um, I, I love how the shapes play into each of the sections. And um, it totally makes sense. Let's go. I love the grid lines, the the everything. If you want an inspiration, you're looking at it. DisruptiveSocial.co.uk. Go at it now. Harry, you're awesome. Thank you so much for building something like this. It, it's hard. I can't even think like this. And so how, how do you do that? Hello. <laughs> So how do you do do this? I love the type. I love, love everything. Let's go social media. Okay. Oh, okay. This is oh, these are tabs. These are tabs. These, this is just a tab component. All right, all right. Ugh. <laughs> I think I'm done gushing. All right, let's. Let's go to, uh, I think, one more question. Hold on. All right. Wait, got to close that door. <laughs> okay, back. It's not appearing at all. Okay, let me get one more link or one more question. Actually, one question, one link, and here we go. From Baguette, 
how to make the ins uh, image inside the parent div block fix and apply the overflow hidden property to this image. Not sure what you mean. And again, if I'm not answering your question on this stream, you can always go to forum.webflow.com. And uh, there's a lot of people in the chat room who are from the community. You can join the community as well. Ask your question there and they will answer it for you as best they can. Uh, let's get one more. This is going to be for Casba dot webflow.io let me pull it up dot webflow.io oh wait really see sites now i'm not sure if like i'm like how are they even built in webflow i want to learn this is pretty and this is a e-commerce mega menu okay oh that's pretty oh okay so i want something for my living room right now and oh it's still a work in progress oh i can't wait can't wait to see you build stuff all right let's scroll down wait okay now this oh yeah what's this for right here i'm wondering what's this line for great job on your slider interactions nice oh this is so pretty i want uh i want this where does it go after pay i don't know what this is um wait a minute i thought i clicked on the couch Okay, so still work in progress. To oh, product page. There we go. All right, totally understand. Work in progress. Great job. I have nothing to say about this. You, you're you awesome. This is uh, a prototype. If it's... Oh, nice. If this is a prototype, you're doing an awesome job so far. Just keep at it. Nice and huge. This reminds me of Airbnb and um, Netflix. Now the items are coming out. Nice nice oh do the things do the things let's chat doesn't work but i understand what's gonna happen wow okay so uh see what i mean by white space how everything's so spaced out sure it's gonna make users scroll down more but it's more pleasing to the eye because everything's spaced out. Everything gives my eyes some time to breathe. and But it's a lot of things happening at once. Okay? So take note of this. Casba.webflow.io. Yes. Yes. Uh, Chris is asking, can we add page transitions in Webflow without custom code? The answer is no. You you need to have custom code where it, um, it says... Uh, take the URL from whatever you've clicked on, save it in the browser as a, as in a memory, in a variable, and then next thing you know, uh, the interaction plays, and then you have to wait however long the interaction is playing for, and then you tell the browser, okay, go to that saved URL that I saved, and then it goes to it, and then it loads up that page. And then that next page will have a page load animation, okay? So you need two animations, one to, for your exit and one for your uh, page load, okay? Um, wait, who made this? Alex? Of course you did. Alex, you're, you're nuts. This is beautiful. How do you do the things? Oh, great job, great job. I love it when um, you guys show me your work. Uh, and if you're still working out, if you're still trying to get to to what Alex has built or what Harry has built, again, we are all students of the web. We are all learning. And I wish I can get to this, um, to this level, you know? Um, but it's fun to see people who are so far ahead that, um, it just inspires me to keep learning and find out how I can get there. And once I get there, how can I go even further and find someone else to uh, be inspired by? So it just keeps going like that. All right. So it is 11. Let's finish this stream. 
So thank you all so much for joining me live. If you're watching a recording, again, uh, this stream happens live every t every other Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Webflow App. You can follow me on Twitter at the Pixel Geek. You can find us on Instagram at Webflow App as well. If you need any account billing or technical help, please. Uh, send an email, or I mean, uh, yeah, send us an email through the contact form at university.webflow.com slash contact, and I and the rest of the support team, customer success team, will help you out as fast as we can. If you have any design or custom code questions, or you want to just join our community of developers and designers, go to forum.webflow.com. Everyone's there. Everyone's super helpful, super nice. And if you get your question answered, please pass that forward and uh, pass that favor forward and answer someone else's questions so we can all grow together. Um, next week, Tuesday. So yes, next week, Tuesday, September 18th, be here, 10 a.m. Pacific, and we will talk about the grid. Yes, CSS grid inside of Webflow. That's gonna be fun. All right, so thank you guys so, so much. And as always, make the web beautiful. See ya.